In this video, I'm going to talk about how to have a raid date. And I'm gonna illustrate it with two really good dates and two really bad dates. The premise of the show is that three girls have to find out if they like F-boys or nice guys, and they have to figure out if the guy is an F-boy or a nice guy. The lesson that I think that you'll really enjoy here is that no matter what type of guy you are, the fundamentals to having a great date and having great dating skills is the same. There are F-boys who have really, really bad game, and there are nice guys who have great game, and vice versa. So let me show you some of the examples of how these guys are. I used to be a club promoter. Oh, I have had my experience with a club promoter. I hope you're not everywhere. I hope you're not everywhere. So right away he's like, nah, that's that's what exactly what an F boy says. Nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not an F boy. Of course not. <laughs> the correct way to deny that would be like. No, I'm not, and here's why. And reason one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other love languages that you feel like are important to you? I also like physical touch. Um, that's a great question to ask on a date. It's what is your love language? Um, that's based on this book, The Five Love Languages, that came out maybe a decade ago. And women have been reading it. Some men are aware of it. It has uh, the premise is that everyone feels loved differently. And so when you ask that question, not only is it an interesting question, it also gives you feedback on what type of uh, love language she has so you can calibrate your communication to match the best way that she feels loved. I'm the perfect dude for you, you know? Are you like a relationship guy? Or are you mostly single? Or do you date around? I'm super independent. Okay. I'm super independent. <laughs> that, that means he's an F-boy. <laughs> so that's, that's what an F-boy would say. Um, it's not a normal response for most guys. I'm super independent. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a F-boy response. I had like a real relationship last Relationships. I had a real relationship. Um, that means he's had a lot of relationships that weren't real. So these are just little red flags if you're looking for guys who are not that serious. What about you? Uh, I'm a bit different in regard to occupation and in regard to my love life. I was in Chippendale for just under 10 years. So this guy, first second that I saw him, his facial expressions and the way he is, he's very grounded. Um, you can tell from some of the gray hair that he's a little bit older, so he's probably more experienced. Have you been objectifying yourself since you were 19? People have been objectifying me. <laughs> and the way he listens and reacts to CJ here is just very, very solid. He's not reacting to get a reaction, he's literally there listening to her. The way he expresses his emotions is that it's coming out from him. It's not being influenced by external factors. So this is a guy who he's been around, he's been a dancer, he obviously can get girls. He's used to getting girls, but he's not letting that run his life. So just the way he is, super grounded, super solid. If you think about it from a game perspective, he's basically super congruent with who he is. And that's that's really attractive. Of course, the good looks, the, <laughs> the bone structure and his... Um, the fact that he was a dancer, his muscles, all those help. But at the end of the day, it's his communication skills that's making him stand out from the rest of the guys. You also notice that uh, she tried to impose something on him. She's like, oh, you've been objectifying yourself. And then he paused and he said, people have been objectifying me. So it's a very distinct, subtle, but important difference. Um, or cheating. But if you actually live there, it's you, you don't have to be a degenerate. Yeah, so CJ's been around. I think she's correct. Uh, people that live in Vegas, they just have regular lives. The Strip, there's a certain lifestyle there for sure for people that visit or people that work in that industry sometimes. Um, and it is true that I would say probably 90% of club promoters are F-boys. Uh, I have yet to meet one who isn't. Maybe one. I think we had one guy, friend. Back when we were running it pretty hard uh, downtown at the penthouse, um, we, had, <laughs> we had a lot of club promoter friends and all of them had this mentality. You almost have to have that mentality to even survive in that world because you're constantly hitting up girls, trying to invite them to parties, and you just have to have that mindset where the social velocity is really fast. So there's almost no other way to, to be a club promoter. Um, just part of it comes with the gig. There might be exceptions to that. I think I, know, I knew one guy, I think Eric, who was a really nice guy. He didn't sleep around, um, he had a girlfriend, but that was like one out of like 20 guys we met. Uh, club promoters. What are your hobbies? I really like going to the gym, spend time with my cat. I would love to go on a date with Sarah. I thank me, Sarah, and Nikki. So as soon as I see like talent agent Hollywood on the dating show, I'm like, okay, F boy. But let's see how he does. Yeah, like we could all go on a date. <laughs> 
we could all go on a date. Uh, you know, uh, let's have a threesome, foursome, five sum. This guy's an F boy for sure. You're kind of the talk of town. It's not that much about the town. Huh? Well, it's, it's more of a humble abode, but I think I'm going to run for mayor of it one day. <laughs> so there are guys who are just very witty. And Mark is one of these guys who just are good with words. They're good with like um, coming up with jokes on the spot. They, they see things that other people don't. They, they, they do wordplay. So these guys can be very attractive um, when you first meet them and um, they can make a great first impression. I like that CJ gets him. There are a lot of girls, especially club girls, who um, guys like that, they start spitting their game and the girls are just like, huh, I don't understand because he's too clever for them. However, CJ is getting it. Um, of course, like girls in the club are also drunk and just wasted, but these girls are sober, I think. So um, she's having a good first impression from Mark. Guys, I feel like I'm, like I'm having to share you. <laughs> you like Sharon? Not. Okay, so my boy Casey, this guy I think has like, he, he's, <laughs> if I was like 23, back when I was a virgin, clueless, this guy would be like my best friend. I would try to make him my best friend because he's, he exemplifies everything um, that I wished to be when I was younger. And I remember when I was younger, in my 20s, I would look for these guys who were just naturally charismatic, who people gravitate towards. And I'd almost want to like be close to them to, to, to understand how they do their magic. And so this is a guy who, if I met him uh, in my 20s, I would totally emulate him, follow him. And I think the way he runs his game is very, very smooth. You. <laughs> not you, no. Casey's been sweet and cute and fun. He's not doing anything wrong. I'm really not worried about any of the guys. Casey's doing is solidifying their relationship. He's doing two things. He's letting her know that he doesn't want to share her. So he's like, I'm, I own you, I claim you. But at the same time, he's like, I'm not too worried about the competition. So it's a very, it's almost like a contradiction almost, but in a way not. Um, he, you can feel both emotions. And dating, there's this idea of paradox, which is sometimes you have two ideas that are contradictory. Like uh, all women sleep around and uh, women are loyal, right? These are two contradictory um, philosophies but what you have to understand when it comes to human nature is that you can hold two ideas at the same time and both of them might be true in different situations i would work at all i brought a books and she was like y'all trying to court me with books like i feel like she doesn't read discretion is is one of the really big qualities of a guy who actually gets girls now you can be an f boy you can be loud and your reputation might spread far and wide but girls won't come to you for repeat business and they won't tell their friends good things about you. You'd be surprised at how extensive the roots are of the gossip tree. Um, people hear stuff. And so you never want to badmouth anyone that you've slept with or dated. You always want to maintain like a positive attitude and positive intentions. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't warn someone. You, can't, you can warn your friend of like this girl that you've dated and give them like a download but you never want to talk badly of a girl that you're just dating um, because word travels fast and your reputation is almost more important than anything else when, it, when, when you're dating around, uh, especially in a smaller town, um, word gets around, so. Okay, my boy Casey, this guy's this game is so good. Yeah, okay. So he's like, can I take you to the room? Can I show you the place? And you can see, he I don't know if this he's foreshadowing or not, but he's using his middle finger to point like, can I take you to the room? So I don't know if that's unconscious. Uh, watch how he runs his game here. Yeah, yeah, can you describe it? Yeah, I can show you actually. So All right, so the girls have a beautiful villa. The guys have like bump beds. So this is this is what Casey has to work with. Let's see what he does. <laughs> You're already getting in my bed, huh? Yeah. Okay, here. that's fair. Come talk. Come talk? Come talk. <laughs> Right away, he leans back. It's very subtle, but instead of jumping on her, and most guys are really over eager, he leans back and he's like, let's talk. But he's got his game face on. I've never been in a guy's bump bed. Yeah. My bed's definitely better. I'll see it. I feel like I'll see it at some point, right? I mean, shot. Well, how do you feel about the energy in here? I don't think it's good. He asked her twice, how do you feel? And then how do you feel about the energy here? What do you think? He is gaming her. This is this is how players game. <laughs> when, when you have the girl there, you know, she initiated the, the house tour. She's sitting in your bed or she's alone with you, okay, in a comfortable room. Usually it's in your bedroom. At this point, there's a what we call prelay relaxation mode. I know it sounds very nerdy, but this is a situation where the girl's ready to escalate and she's just waiting for the guy to make the right moves. And Casey, my boy here, knows exactly what to do. The energy in this bunk bed? Yeah. 
she's testing him. She's energy in his bunk bed. It's like, what? What are you talking about? She's like, oh, this is nothing compared to my villa. But watch how he runs it. I mean, it's not ideal. I think the California King at the villas would be better. So like, I'm thinking at this point, maybe I move in with you. And we just- I feel like you. Oh, you do? Okay, so think of it as like a download bar, right? It's like the, the girl's there. He's like, okay, is this guy for real? Is this guy a real guy? Do I want to sleep with him? And the download bar kind of goes from zero to 20 to 30 to 50 to 100. He's gaming here, but he's doing it in a way that's playful. He's not taking it too serious. He's also asking her how she feels and he's being engaging. So he's proactively adding value without taking value away, which a lot of the other guys do. They're too needy, um, too pushy. Casey's perfect push and pull. So at this point, CJ is like, I feel you. So when she says, I feel you, that's when she's like, okay, the download bar hit 100, the girl's now down. Okay, this is, I know it sounds like you're cooking a turkey or something and you're waiting for the temperature to get to a certain point, but that's how seduction works. This is how good game is run. From the girl's perspective, think of it as like you're watching a movie, good tension, but there's like a release of tension and then you hit the climax and the bad guy gets defeated and you have a happy ending and he's he's running it right this is for the girl a very good feeling of excitement comfort arousal so notice how Casey waited for her to kiss him his his game is so good that he'll wait for the girl to you can't tell a soul can you ask? Yeah, I do. Bye. same time next week when you run good game not do not only do both sides feel amazing watching it is like watching a work of art it's like that's how it should be done um, that's why I'm so excited about this right it, it's it's uh, it is a privilege to experience seduction um, by, by someone who knows what they're doing guy or girl let's take a look at the next date guy walks into a sperm bank doctor says he's getting a lot of this guy Mark is nervous he's punching so many jokes in there um, one of the problems is that guys rely too much on one thing they're good at. So I know a guy who, who for example, he wins like, you know, uh, debates and stuff. And he'll go into this date and he'll be really articulate and he'll argue really well and the girl will be initially attracted to him, right? But it's kind of like a one trick pony. It's one dimension. And he just keeps winning debates. And after a while, the girl's like, whoa, you're like arguing with me about everything. Some guys are kind of like a little bit aggressive and she likes that at first, but he's always aggressive. And then by, by the time you get to like the first hour of the date, she's just like, this is the only thing he has. A dynamic date has multiple emotions to it. There's fun, there's seriousness, there's going deep, there's, you know, taking things lightly. It's a push and pull of emotions. And sometimes guys like Mark or guys that have like one dimension to that, that are, that's really strong, they tend to rely on that a little bit too much and they don't know how to step away from that and just be themselves or have another dimension to them. I was so excited to have a good time with Mark and I'm starting to feel a bit disappointed. So she's like, I don't know if there'll be a second date. And um, with Mark, I don't, they cut a lot of scenes out, but I have a feeling that he, he just kept talking because he's trying to impress her. He's like, so a lot of, uh, one thing that guys do is like, Oh, I'm telling jokes and she laughed and now it's like button if I push this button I'll get this response and now they're like addicted like a rat to pushing that button push response push response what they don't understand is that that response works but now you need to move on to something else that's another phase and so they're addicted to that or they're afraid to step away from that because they don't they're, they're so reliant on that positive response they don't know how to do anything else it's kind of like if you're training in martial arts and you figure out the first um, deflection and punch and you just keep doing that but in a real fight there the guy's gonna switch it up sometimes you'll end up on the floor sometimes he'll hit you with a life jab so you have to become dexterous in your game where you just don't rely on just one and as CJ said listen to the girl stop talking and just give her a chance to uh, express yourself and be yourself with with me right it's a different experience yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm really excited for today, and I haven't really had much time with Sarah, and I'm just really looking forward to. So, side note: one of the reasons I love this show is the diversity. So, you can tell this girl Sarah, this little blonde girl, and some of the other girls too. They actually like uh, black guys and Asian guys. There, there are a lot of black guys and two Asian guys on the show. So these girls are like actually giving them a chance. They're actually genuinely into them. I know, like. If you watch The Bachelorette and stuff, they throw like two 
one token Asian guy, one token black guy on there, and they keep him around like a few episodes, and you know the girl's not attracted to minorities, right? But in this case, I like these girls because they're, they're actually giving them a chance and they pick the right girls. They pick girls who are open to dating, not just based on color. So props to, to whoever the produced the show for that. I'm feeling back the layers a little bit and getting to know what's under the hood. Marketing exec, that's a good job. Uh, Tampa. So he's, he, this guy's got a job. You know, he, he might have been an ex like athlete. Uh, I like him so far. The way he speaks is very like I'm a gentleman. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Looks like we got a few different types of rock. Got great body language too. Uh, very solid the way he walks, very sure of himself. Um, strong but gentle, almost like a gentle giant. And I think Sarah likes him so far, based on her body language. But, um, but let's see. Oh, what is it? So cute. This is pretty cool. Just straight up rum? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's what we call mirroring. So I don't know if it was probably a coincidence, but you go, mm, or aha, and you kind of mirror the other person. Um, mirroring can happen with body language. It can happen with sounds. It can happen with, with the way the gaze, the eye contact. You look back and you look at each other like, oh yeah, same expressions. So mirroring is a very powerful way to build a connection with someone. So I'm curious, what made you choose me for the day today? I'm being totally honest too. I think this is like the most genuine connection that I've had with someone. Great question. What made you come out on a date with me? Why did you pick me? Why did you like my profile? Um, when you have engagement, one of the first things you can ask is why me? And you're basically forcing her in a way to tell you what she likes about you. And the nice thing about this is it, you can throw away all your assumptions. Sometimes I assume, for example, she likes me because I'm a tall, good looking Asian guy, or she likes me because I'm smart. But when I ask her and she's like, oh, I actually like the fact that you're a nerd. You're like, oh, okay, this is why she liked me. So it kind of clears up the air and it gives you some data as far as like, what's the reason that she she's into me right now? And what does that mean about what type of girl she is and also what she really knows about who I am? What type of like dater are you? So Sarah's great because she, she asks every guy, what type of dater are you? That's a great question for you girls if you're watching this. Um, a player will give you a response like, oh, I'm very independent. I'm, I'm, I'm open to something serious, but you know, I'm, I'm also like very free. That's the player response. A guy who actually understands what he wants and he wants a relationship, he'll be like, you know, I'm looking for something real. I'm not like super eager to get it, but like it's on my radar. So this is the difference in the response between F boy and a guy who, you know, he's looking for the right girl. In the DMs, you dating apps. I'm honestly like an in real life kind of guy. Yeah. Like I enjoy going out to and meeting randomly and like just the serendipity of it all. Serendipity is a, was a movie with Kate Beckinsale back in the 90s, I think, early 2000. Um, but the word is interesting. Number one, it, he's showing off how uh, his vocabulary, um, but also the word is means that you are almost like fated to meet, right? And he also says he's not on dating apps, he's all in person. So everything he's saying, assuming it's true, is painting a picture for her that he is a guy who's offline, who's very like in person, very genuine. and. Sarah is a type of girl that actually um, would probably want that, okay? She's a very good girl. She's obviously good with like her social media, her makeup, but I would say deep down, she's like a small town girl who's, you know, looking for the white picket fence um, somewhere in the, in, the, in the near term future. Knowledge that she liked my slow approach. It honestly, it made me feel really good. It feels like probably a little bit corny, but like marrying my best friend yeah. is the objective. Okay, so his type of game is great for girls like Sarah, <laughs> but not so great for girls who are more like CJ, right? He's maybe a little too boring, but he said two very interesting things. He said in the past he rushed in. So this is what we call cliff diver syndrome. You're so like addicted to being loved or you so crave the love, you dive into the relationship before you're really looking for, you know, the right signals of a long-term relationship and whether it can work or not. And then he said, I'm looking for my best friend. That's a big one too. If you're looking to marry someone long term, you're looking for a person who, when you have kids or when things don't go well, you're roommates and you need to be best friends. You need to have respect for each other when it's not all sexual and sexy and steamy and on a beautiful island and fun. So he's actually, his values are correct. 
his game is actually pretty good for a girl like her, but I don't think his game would work if, if um, a girl's a little bit more party-ish. So he's definitely on the spectrum of like playful, free spirit, uh, type of like anything goes type of game. He's more on the like, I'm looking for the right one, I'm stable, and I'm more like predictable and safe. So he's definitely on the more left side. And then from there, like allowing the romantic to take care of itself, yeah. so to speak. So I think we just have to like take advantage of the time that we have. Take advantage of the time we have, she wants to move it faster. So she, she's like, I feel you, I understand you, I actually share your values, but she's uh, probably horny. <laughs> so she's, she wants to move forward. And she might be also on her time constraint where she has to filter out guys um, based on the timeline of the show. I'm actually into a nice guy for once, which is really nice. <laughs> she wants to, that little look right there, when, when there's like a few moments of silence and she looks at you and she leans in a little bit, she's seeing if there's a kiss. So the right move here would have been to lean in a little bit and see if she moves away. So when you lean in a little bit, she stays there or she leans in more, she's, she wants you to kiss her. If you lean in a little bit, look at her and she's kind of like staying there and just looks away, that's not ready. But from what I could tell from their expression there, she was seeing there was some physical connection there as well in addition to the verbal connection. I can tell both of us are feeling like a little sexual tension and I wouldn't be mad if Josh made a move on me. She's a little disappointed but he's being a gentleman but she's a little disappointed. So I, I have done this too like I've had girls like literally stand next to my face look up kind of like with those bright anime eyes like are you gonna kiss me? <laughs> and I'll be like well, let's take it slow. Because, you know, look, this guy, I don't know about him, but for me, it's like I'm on my timeline too. Like, I respect your timeline. I want you to have a good time, but I don't want to kiss you if I'm not ready, right? So this is, at a, at a, when you're a guy who you know you can, if you wanted to run like f way game and get girls, you know you can do it, and you're pulling that back, and you're like, I want to be true to who I am and really follow my timeline, you should, you should follow your own timeline. Now, obviously, this is a competition, but there's a give and take as far as kind of a dance, right? Like how how much do I have my own timeline versus what does she want and what is the compromise here as far as the dance goes? But um, I thought this was a great date. Cool, cool. Ah! She wanted to kiss I did want to give you a kiss. Oh, that's, that's a great one. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the guy's the guy's smart. So he realized like, wait, maybe the kiss was there. So he he sensed it. Maybe the competition was starting to, to step in. So he asked her, I wanted to give you a kiss, and she's like, of course. So that was later that night, and uh, this is how it turns out. Thank you for asking me, but in this scenario, good, good job. job. I think it was the right move. It really made a good impression on me. <laughs> I definitely didn't say the high maintenance comment. I so look, if you're on a reality show, don't lie because they're just gonna play the clip back. <laughs> so it's like just admit it, you know, own it. Um, it's just embarrassing when they play back the clips. Like, no, this is what you said. If you enjoyed the YouTube video, please give us a like. You may also want to download the free resources that I have in the links in the description that will help you with your dating life. You can download the 33 field tested lines that will give you the exact word to send that first online message or first text to get the highest response rates. You can also download the eight style attraction triggers that will show you the tactics I used to go from a 23 year old virgin to modeling at Fashion Week and how you can instantly upgrade your look and supercharge your dating results. If you're an Asian guy, check out the Unbreakable Opener and the Asian Attraction Ratio at datingwithoutborders.net.